I'm Hugh Collingborn, Director of Technology with Sapphire Steel Software. In this tutorial, I'll be explaining how to create multiple user-defined objects in ActionScript 3. Our aim is eventually to make a simple adventure game from them. In my last tutorial, I created a class called Room. This acts as a blueprint for creating multiple room objects to define the locations in an exploring type of adventure game. The room class started out as a very simple class indeed, with just one piece of data, its name. I'm now ready to develop this class further by giving it some exits. That is, some information on any rooms to which the current room connects in the north, south, west and east directions. And this is the new version of the room class. As you can see, the extra data takes the same form as the name field. Each exit is a public variable of the string type, and it's initialized in the constructor. So the constructor receives arguments which are then assigned to the variables. Now, declaring publicly accessible variables in this way is not particularly good object-oriented practice, but it's simple, so we'll stick to it for now. In a later tutorial, I'll show you how to hide internal data of objects and use accessor methods to get and set their values. Let's now see how this class is used in the MXML file that defines the user interface of the game. The first thing I've done is to define a number of constants. Now these constants will hold the names of the rooms. I'll be using these values not only to name each room as it's created, but also to indicate which room lies at each of its four exits. Declaring them as constants not only saves some typing effort, but more important, it avoids the possibility that I'll make a mistake when I repeatedly enter the names of the rooms. Then I declare a set of room variables. And finally, I create the room objects. When I create the room objects, I call the constructor using the new keyword and pass to it all the arguments it requires. So the name and the room names at each of the exits. I want this init function to be called when the application is first created. So I've made it an event handler for the application complete event. This event fires when the application initializes. In a similar way, I've entered the name show map down here as the event handler for the click event of the button. Now when show map executes, it calls another function, show exits, and it calls it this once for each of the room variables. If we look at the show exits function, you can see it receives each room variable with the argument name a room. It then accesses the internal data using dot notation to get at the public variables which we declared in the room class. Once it's done this, it concatenates all the values into a string using the plus operator and it adds the end result to the text field of the TA, the text area object. And here the plus equals operator is used. This is a shorthand way of writing the equivalent of TA.text equals TA.text plus S. Now at the end of all this I have a simple map of rooms each of which leads in principle to other rooms. And when I run the program, this application will pop up in a web browser. When I click the button, which has the click event handler attached to it, it will create the string and show the results. And it shows that the rooms have been correctly created, they've given their names, and the exits have been set up to lead to other rooms in principle or when there is no other room adjoining in that direction, no exit is displayed. The one thing I can't do at the moment is allow the player to move around from one room to another because I haven't programmed that behavior into this application. And that's the thing that I want to be doing 
in the next tutorial.